Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining me. You know, I want to talk to you today about desperation. It's so important because I see it so much as a relationship coach. I see so much desperation in love, but then I also see desperation in business, you know, just desperation in life. And it's very important. And I've said this before that desperation is a weak emotion and it produces weak results. Now you can call desperation or despair, you know, like you think about like if, if the car, if a car is trapped on your child's foot and I think they've shown to where like a mom was able to lift the car or something, you know, to, to get the baby's foot from under the tire or something like that. And the person will say, well, you know, they were desperate and operate from that desperation but really, when you really look at it, no, it's operating from love. It was that love for that person that gave he or she the strength to lift the back of the car up, you know, the uh, inch off the ground or a centimeter so the foot could be slid from under the tire. You know, a lot of times what we are calling desperation is, is hope. You say, oh, well, you know, I just got tired of being single and I started praying every day and I said a prayer every day and then I met my husband because I was desperate for love. No, you were hopeful for love. You were uh, faithful for love. You were in expectation for love. Stop operating from desperation. Don't be desperate. And I'm going to tell you, you know, I've been desperate. I've been desperate in business. Um, not so much in, in love, but I've been desperate in business to where as I was building my brand, building my, you know, my, my business, I would get speaking engagements that would come in and be like, oh, we don't have a budget. Will you speak for free? And then a, a lot of times some you speak for free and it's great. It's amazing, you know, because you can see that there's a budget somewhere like put into the event. But then some is free and it felt free. You get there and it's just a hole in the wall. There's nobody there. Or I would accept less than what I was worth because I was desperate to look like I was doing something, to look like I was making moves, to look like I had something going on, like I had a bunch of speaking engagements. And I started to realize that, wow, if I accept a thousand dollars, I could speak two or three times a week and I would never be with my family. I could have 150 speaking engagements a year. And yes, that would be $150,000 that I made, but at what expense? At what would be the cost? You know, I would lose my family. I would lose my sanity. I would lose my peace. I would have to get into this uh, another type of, you know, release. And when I see men do that, I see them end up, you know, cheating on their wife or getting addicted to marijuana, addicted to por pornography, addicted to alcohol, addicted to painkillers because they're operating from desperation. They're taking everything that's given to them. Then on the other side, I see women operating from, from desperation in love. So men do it a lot in business. Women do it a lot in love. And women operating from desperation. So you just jump out there for this guy, you know, who you know he is a drug dealer. And you know, or you know he's aggressive, you know he's abusive, you know he's a womanizer, you know he has 50 million baby mamas and he doesn't even take care of the kids he already has. And then you have unprotected sex with him and then next thing you know you're pregnant and now he's walking out on you and he's in and out and he's not helping you. And it was all because you were operating from desperation. So what you gotta do is you gotta sit down and you gotta look at your life and you gotta write out what you want. I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, you know, because I was thinking to myself, and I use myself for an example, and you can do this in love, you can do this in business, you know, general life, whatever. But not long ago, it was a TV show, you know, that reached out to me and the, the network pitched the show to me. And, and I heard the concept and I was like, hmm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about this network, not too sure about this concept. And then they had a like a pilot. You know, they had shot and, and they had a host on there and they were going to be switching out the host, you know, because the host had a conflict of interest, you know, had to go do another show for them. And so they were looking for a replacement. And I'm kind of similar. I favor the host. And they sent it to me and I watched it. 
And I'm watching him, I'm watching his energy, and I'm like, okay, his energy is different than mine. You know, he definitely feels like he's at home. And he's been hosting for over a decade now. It feels like he's at home. It feels like a natural. And, and then he's also, he's cursing. Well, this channel, you know, it's a secular channel, and, and they have cursing on their shows. I don't curse. So when I looked at it, I said, mm, this isn't 100% the fit. This isn't 100% the fit, but I was in a, a, a mindset of desperation. And so I took and I shot, you know, a, a demo reel or whatever for it, and it didn't go anywhere. You know, they were like, oh, wow, this is amazing what you sent us. But then I didn't hear anything else, so they obviously went a different direction. But then I thought about it later and I said, Tony, you shouldn't have even done that because really deep down, you didn't really want it. Fortunately for me, I'm covered. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm covered by he who has sent me, um, God. So even when I make a misstep, he's ordering my steps and, and he has grace over me. Um, if you don't feel covered, or if you know that you're not covered because of how you're living or how you're moving, then make sure you don't act out of desperation. You know, I acted out of desperation, which was really out of ignorance as well, but it still didn't go through. And I realized my steps are being ordered, that I'm being reserved for a certain time, for a certain project, that I'm being reserved, or it may be to remain an independent doing my own thing so I have control over my message so I can say God and Jesus and my beliefs freely, you know, I don't know. But I look at it and I sit down and I say, well, what do I really, really want? And when I write out what I really want, it's really what I already have, but just on a larger scale. So look at your life in, in whatever area that you feel you may be lacking in the business area, in the love area, in the friend area, wherever it may be that you feel you may be lacking and write out what you really want. And then guess what? When stuff comes your way and it's not that, it doesn't match what you put down that you want, that you know that will make your heart happy, content, and that you will be satisfied with that, then keep it moving. Don't get desperate. Just because your blessing is delayed, it does not mean that your blessing is denied. So don't get desperate. Remain confident and positive and faithful on your journey because if you are desperate you'll end up drinking poison you'll end up in a situation that can kill you don't get desperate hey this is tony gaskins thank you so much for listening and we'll talk soon